All right, hello again. It is me, Firefighter John. Um, wish I could be with you guys, but obviously this year that is not going to happen. I hope you guys are staying safe and healthy, both you and your families. Um, it is Fire Prevention Month, so usually I come in to see you, um, but today we're going to do it this way. So hopefully cut us a little slack. It should be just fine, though. So here we go. Very first thing we're going to talk about is smoke alarms. Okay, you know what a smoke alarm is. You know what they do. You should know by now. Um, they're always, always sniffing for smoke. When it smells it, it goes off, just like that. And that means there is smoke in your house and more than likely there is fire in your house. When this goes off, you have to get outside. It is the only place you are safe. Now sometimes smoke alarms go off when mom and dad are cooking, okay? Um, if it goes off and mom and dad say that's just me cooking, you don't have to go outside unless of course there's fire on the stove, then get out of there, okay? Um, but a lot of times what parents do when the smoke alarm is going off when they're cooking, they will reach up and take out the battery to shut it up and it works really well. Okay, the problem with that is sometimes they forget to put it back in. Most of the bigger fires we go to, they do have smoke alarms in their homes, but they look like this. They're hanging on the ceiling or on the wall with no battery in it. So the only time you should, anyone should ever take a battery out of a smoke alarm is if they're putting a new one in. All right. Um, if you see, there we go. If you see your parents taking the battery out, your job is to yell at them. You don't even have to be nice. Um, tell them, hey, you're supposed to be the smart ones in the family. Put that back in there. And if they say to you, how dare you be so rude to me, have them call me. I'll be happy to talk to them as well. Okay? So, with a smoke alarm, it goes off, you get out. But in order for them to work, they have to have the battery in it. We talked about that. So you have to check it. But once a month, you should actually test the smoke alarm to see if it's working. All you have to do is push the button. There's a little button on there. That's how I made it go off before. You push the button. Smoke alarm better go off. All right? Then you need to look around in your house. This is really important. Because these are so important, you can be like the little fire marshal in your house and go look into your house and make sure there is at least one of these on every level of your home. That means basement, first floor, second floor, um, basement, I mean, excuse me, attic. Probably don't need them up there, depending on if it's a, a finished attic or whatever. But at least one on every single floor. You can have more, okay, but at least one. If you don't, talk to mom and dad and um, let them know they need to have more smoke alarms. And um, they can also call us. If they call the non-emergency number, um, or they can just call my direct line, which is 236-5249. We will come and put them in for you for free. We want to make sure you have enough smoke alarms. But you actually have to look to make sure. All right? Now, with the smoke alarms. The smoke alarms are going off because of the smoke. Obviously, that's the name. Um, if you look where your smoke alarms are, they are up high. And the reason for that is because that's where the smoke goes. The smoke in a fire is extremely hot. Okay, that's why it goes up. Hot air rises. Okay, it is really, really hot. It is very, very poisonous. Um, it can make you very, very sick or worse very quickly. And it is really black. Okay, you cannot see a thing. So what you need to do is um, if you are ever in a smoky room, and I, of course I hope you never have a fire in your house, but if you are ever in a smoky room, you need to get under that smoke. Okay, so again, since the smoke goes up, you go down. All right, so you get down and you crawl, and when you crawl, make sure you are on your hands and knees, not down here. Okay, and I know you can do this army crawl like this, even this old man can do it. Um, but the reason you don't want to do that is because there's, when some stuff burns, like um, anything with a cushion on it, like a couch or a mattress or whatever, um, 
it releases a really, really poisonous gas that is actually heavier than air. And so it falls down and it's right about here. So if you are down here, you are breathing in nothing but poison. So up on your hands and knees, keep your head up, watch where you're going, and get outside. All right. Now before you have a fire, that is the time to think about how am I going to get out of here? Okay, when your house is on fire is not the time to go, hmm, how am I going to do this? Okay, your house is on fire, you are not thinking correctly. You are scared, and you should be. Um, you got to get moving. So with your family, you need to come up with a home escape plan. It is very, very simple to do. So we'll go over here, and I'll show you what we got. All right, first of all, you need to do the floor plan of your house. And what that is, that is just like you're a giant and you rip the roof off and you're looking straight down. Okay, where there's a wall, you have a line. Where there is a door, you have a space. And these little dotted lines are windows. Okay, you can do it that way or you can put a little rectangle if you wanted to. You could do that instead of the, come on. You could just do a little, okay? Um, make that your window and you gotta make that noise when you do it. Uh, anyway, what you have to do is you have to come up with two ways out of each room in your house. And that's not tough, because there only are two ways out. It's gotta be the door or the window in every single room of your house. So, you go through the house and we got the kitchen here. Here's the door, we can go out that way. Here's the window, we could go out that way. The dining room, door. Window, living room, door. We could even go whoop, out that window. We got a bedroom over here, door, window, and another bedroom, door, window, and then we got the bathroom, the door, and the window. Um, a lot of bathrooms do not have a window in them. Um, you better get moving, okay? Because there's no way out. You are not safe in your shower. And a lot of kids think you are, and you might be safe from the fire for a little bit, but the smoke is what's going to get you. Remember, we talked about that. So the first thing is, you come up with two ways out of every single room. Then, you need to come up with a safe meeting place. You pick a big tree, neighbor's front door, uh, the mailbox, if you have one of those that are away from the house. Obviously not ones that are on the house. Okay, and you get there, front sidewalk, whatever. Everybody goes there. You need to talk to your parents about this and say, we need a safe place to meet. And that way, we'll know everybody's out. So up here, you can see, here's our two ways out. Our safe meeting place is a tree. So you can see why I do what I do and I'm not an artist there. Really nice tree, actually. Um, so here's the deal. If you come out the kitchen, you go to the big tree, come out the living room, you go to the big tree. You come out the bedroom, you go to the big tree, you get it. Um, everybody ends up in the same spot. That way mom and dad can go, yep, 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 we're all out. Otherwise, what happens sometimes is if you have a fire, you just got to get out, right? Okay, so you might go out the back door. Mom and dad go out the front door. They don't see you. So they think you're still inside. So they're out in front with, my baby, my baby's in there. And um, your parents love you so much that they're going to run back in. They're going to run back in looking for you. And um, because they think you're in trouble. It's a really bad idea, but because they love you that much, they're going back in. And remember, you are not in trouble. You're back here. You're in the backyard going, where is everybody? Okay, so you get to that safe meeting place. And then you need to practice it. You should practice it one time when it's light out. You should practice it one time when it's dark out. Okay, when you do your practice, don't go out the windows. <laughs> I know that's the, the more fun part, um, but do not go out the windows. Go out the door, make sure everybody meets at that safe meeting place. Because the very first thing we're going to ask you is, is everybody out? You get out and you stay out. Um, you don't go back in for your pets or your toys, or for anything. Parents, brothers and sisters, you get out and stay out. We will go in and check for your pets or whatever. And when we show up and you're all right here, we'll come out over by you and say, is everybody out? That's the time you would tell us. Um, my cat didn't make it out. 
but my cat was in my bedroom the last time I saw it. My bedroom was over here, so we would, when we got in there, we would look over here looking for your cat. All right? If you are upstairs, you do not jump. Um, <laughs> and I have heard some amazing stories. I have a trampoline right outside my window, and I have a pool right outside my window, and I can swing on the branches, and it's like, nah. No, no, and no, you can't, okay? Uh, if you are stuck upstairs, what you do is you go to that window, you open it up, scream your lungs out, okay? Hey, I'm up here, get me out of here. Some of you are old enough, you probably have your own phone. If that isn't in there, you can call and say, hey, I'm stuck in a bedroom upstairs at the house that's on fire. Okay, we will come looking for you that way. You stay up there, and we'll come get you, unless... Okay, there are two big buts. Um, first one, if you're at the window, you're screaming, you're hollering. We're not there yet. We make a lot of noise. You'll know we're there. We're not there yet, and you turn around and that fire is in the same room as you, you got to go. The second time, and this might be a little hard for you to tell, second time, if you start to feel loopy, loopier maybe than usual, um, same deal. You're waving, you're screaming, you're hollering, we're not there yet, and you start to feel like, whoa, okay? That means the smoke is starting to get to your brain. It is time to go. Otherwise, you stay up there and scream and holler. We will come and get you. All right, so two ways out of every room, safe meeting place, and then practice. All right, when you get out and everybody's safe, you need to call 911. Um, you better know that by now. And nine, no one, and another one. Okay, you do that from a neighbor's house or from your cell phone or mom and dad's cell phone if they have it. Nobody should go looking through the house for their phone. If you don't have it, you go to the neighbor's house. I'm sure you're all good enough at making a lot of noise. If it's the middle of the night, you can wake somebody up to call 911. All right. Now, being older kids, smarter kids, um, you know that if you catch on fire, you better know this too. You stop and drop and roll. But you should also cover your face because you don't want your face or your eyes to burn. Not that you want anything to burn, but you really don't want your face or your eyes to burn. So here's what you do. You got to stop. <coughs> drop down to your knees. Cover up those beautiful faces. I'll even cover up this one. Okay, and then you do great big rolls. Roll and roll and roll, and you roll until the fire is out, all right? Not gonna spend a whole lot of time on that because you should know that by now. All right, so you stop, drop, and roll. Fire goes out, stop, drop, roll, cover your face, okay? And um, then you're good, okay? All right, so we, had a, we have fires in Oshkosh that are set by kids, and um, we have a lot of fires in Oshkosh set by kids, and with the stop, drop, and roll, that just reminded me of one where we had a kid who was accidentally set on fire by his friend. Okay, we've had horrible fires. We've had kids who have lit their friends on fire, like the story I'm going to tell you. We've had kids who have burned their houses down. And we have kids who did not make it out of the house with fires that they have lit. Okay, but the one with the stop, drop, and roll, what happened was his friend, he, he and his friend were in the garage playing with fire, and his friend thought, Hmm, this is a really small fire. So we grabbed some gasoline and dumped it on the fire. The part of gasoline that burns is the stinky stuff. Okay, it's the vapors. It's not the liquid. So when he did this, the vapors went whoosh, right up his friend, caught him on fire from here down. Instead of stopping and dropping and rolling, what he did is he tried to do this to put it out. Now his arms are on fire. Okay, so you stop, you drop, you roll. His dad heard him screaming, and um, went and ran in the garage, rolled him out, and put him out. Put him out. Excuse me, rolled him over and put him out. Um, he ended up in the hospital for months. Um, he was burned so badly on his legs that he had to learn how to walk all over again. He was 13 years old, and he had to learn how to walk. I know his, um, his mom called me, and she was so happy one day. She said. Ugh, he walked 90 feet today with a walker. Okay, like, you know, 
like little old men and little old ladies use. Um, he's 13, and that was a win. Okay, so it, it, I know when you're playing with fire, you are not trying to do things like that. You are not trying to hurt anybody. You are not trying to burn a house down, okay? Um, but it does happen, so please, please, please leave them alone. Um, if you see people playing with these, okay? If you see them playing with matches and lighters, you need to talk to an adult and tell them. Okay, you could be saving their life. If it's your brothers or sisters doing it, you better tell. It could be your life, your pets, your families. If it is you playing with fire, and I'm sure some of you are playing with fire. If it is you playing with fire, knock it off. Okay, because you are going to get hurt. And that's the last thing I want you to happen to you. And burns hurt a lot. Most of us have burned our fingers on stoves or grills or, or on even like a lighter or something. Hopefully you, not on a lighter. Um, so you know how much that hurts. Think, think about what would happen if it was your whole body. All right. So keep your hands off of these. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put on what we call our turnout gear. This is the firefighting gear, the stuff that we wear to go into a fire. Everything that I am wearing or that I will be wearing um, is just there to protect me. All right. So first thing I have to do is put on my boots and my pants. Notice my boots are right inside of my pants. That's so I can get dressed a little bit quicker. All right. So I've got to take off my shoes because my shoes don't fit inside of my boots, just like yours don't fit inside of your winter boots. Okay. Then got to step into the boot. And into the other one. And pull up my pants. You got to make those noises. It goes quicker. All right. Then zip everything shut. The boots that protect my feet from the water, from the fire, from the heat. Pants do the same thing. Right. Then I take my suspenders and put those on. Um, and those are so my pants don't fall down. Okay, it is that simple. I know it sounds funny, <laughs> um, but really wouldn't want that to happen in a fire. They have to be loose, okay? So I have to have something to make sure that they stay up. The next thing I have to do is put on my coat. And my coat and my pants are made out of really special stuff to keep me safe from the fire. A lot of times kids and adults will say, what is that special stuff, all right? So, the special stuff is all listed right here. So I'll read you the first one. The outer layer is made out of 60% advanced para aramid microporous PTFE. Special stuff is what it is, okay? I have no idea what that is. It's, it's this, okay? The orange and silver stripes are reflectors. So you can see me in the black yucky smoke, okay? Everything's gotta be zipped up, Velcro tight. Then I gotta protect my hair and my ears. So I put on my little ninja hood here. And I'm gonna put that on. Pull it down. I'm gonna need it, but not quite yet. Right now it's in the way. So I gotta get this out of the way for now. Next thing I'm gonna do is put on my air pack. So my air pack is the heaviest thing that I wear. Um, it gets lighter the longer I'm going, um, which is, sounds really weird. You think it'd feel heavier, but it actually gets lighter because air weighs something. Okay, so as I'm going, I'm losing air. I'm using up the air, so it actually gets lighter. So I got to get it tight. Then I got to bring this around. I got to buckle it up. And I gotta buckle it up again. Maybe if I can find a strap. Come on. Maybe not. <laughs> yeah. There we go. And I gotta buckle it up. And I wanna get it really tight so it's not swinging around on my body. All right. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on my air. When I do that, you are gonna hear a couple noises go off. You're gonna hear a little bell. And then you're going to hear a little robot sound. The bell, or actually both of them are an alarm, but the bell is my air alarm. Okay? If, my, um, if I'm running out of air, when I have two minutes left of air, the bell goes off. 
that means I have to leave. Okay, if, um, even if I'm looking for you. If I'm running out of air, um, I gotta go. And we always go in with a partner. So if I'm running out of air, my partner's running out of air, so we both gotta leave. All right, um, the other noise you hear is um, called a pass device. And it's, what it does is if I don't move for 30 seconds in a fire, it goes off. And that means I'm in trouble. Okay, if I'm in a building that is burning and I haven't moved for 30 seconds, there is something definitely wrong. If I know I'm in trouble, I don't want to just lay there for 30 seconds. I can actually make it go off as well, and I'll do that once I start taking this stuff off here. So first of all, you're going to hear the bells go off and the, and the robot noises. Those are just telling me that everything is working before I need it. All right, everything's good to go. The next thing I have to do is put on my air mask. Okay, this is the thing that makes me look goofy, sound goofy, and freaks out little kids. Um, I've already been at preschools and held this up, and I said, now I gotta put on my air mask, just like I did to you, and they go, ah! Okay, <laughs> so um, I know this does make us look really strange, but it is the most important thing we wear. So I gotta take off my glasses. Did you hear that? You know what that was? I hadn't moved for 30 seconds. That was my pass alarm. All right, so I gotta put this on. I never wanna lose it. So I put it around, I got a strap around my neck. Then I gotta put it on. I gotta get it tight. Then that ninja head comes back up. Okay. The next thing I do is I take this. This is where my air comes from. Take it from here, put it right in here. And the minute I started breathing air, a microphone turned on in here so you could hear me scream. If I'm screaming for you, hey, is anybody in here? Because if this isn't on, you can't hear me how at all. Oh. All right, so next thing I have to do, put on my gloves, keep my hands safe. The air lasts about a half an hour to 45 minutes, depending on how hard you're working and how nervous you are, okay? Then I gotta put on my helmet. And just like you crawl out, we crawl in. Okay, we wanna stay underneath that yucky smoke, even with all this stuff on. That is how nasty it is. We're crawling in there, screaming and hollering for you. If you see us and you can get to us, you need to crawl up to us as fast as you can, give us a big hug, and we'll get you out of there. If you see me, but you can't get to me, maybe there's fire right here. I don't want you going through the fire, okay? You need to make a lot of noise. You need to go, hey, I'm a pig, I'm out of here, help, I'm over here. We'll come and get you, okay? Don't you go through the fire. Now you heard my alarm go off again. I don't know if you noticed, but I went like this, because that's where it is. So it thinks I just moved, so it shut up. All right, then your job there is never to hide from the firefighter. You guys know that. You are old enough to know that this firefighter is dressed like this just to keep himself or herself safe. All right, so I gotta take off my helmet and everything goes just backwards the way it did. All right, um, next thing I have to do is turn off my air. And you guys know that underneath here is snow. This is still me. All right, now, here's the alarm here. This big red button. If I push this button, it'll go off and it means I am in trouble. So I push the button here. And that means, help me. <laughs> I am obviously in trouble if, it, if it's making all that noise. All right, um, please, please, please be careful. Um, we don't want anyone to get hurt playing with fire or just some fire itself. Um, this year's theme for Fire Prevention Week is cooking safety. Some of you are old enough where you're actually doing cooking. Make sure you are really careful. You stay by the stove if you're cooking. You keep little kids away from the stove, okay? And um, if mom and dad are cooking, you stay away as well. All right, thanks for listening to me. Hope you had a little fun and learned something, and hopefully we'll get to see you in school. 
in really, really soon. Thanks.